first reading of his word is from the Old Testament, Psalms 124. I'll be reading from the International Version. Hear the word. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say. If the Lord had not been on our side when men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird out of the foul snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of both heaven and earth. This is the word of the Lord. Let's be to God. We invite you to stand as you are able and help us sing together our hymn. Lord be your God. We will do all four verses. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. That's why we're here, amen, to glorify God. Our New Testament scripture today is found in the book of James. James chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. James 5, 13 to 15. And I'm reading from the NIV. Is any of you in trouble? He should pray. Is any one happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. I'd like to read just one more time the first two verses of Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when men attacked us. Our sermon this morning is, if it had not been for the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, once again, we come before you praising you and lifting you up, Lord. Thanking you, God, for this moment in time that we may hear from your word. Open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, Lord, that we will receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord, the 124th Psalm is a Psalm of David. It is a song of gratitude, a song of thanksgiving, thanksgiving for redemption, thanksgiving for protection, thanksgiving for faithfulness and mercy, thanksgiving for freedom, thanksgiving for God being there when nobody else was there. The psalm was written by a David who had been through a firestorm of troubles. David led a stormy and very eventful life. From the time that he stopped being that little shepherd boy and stepped, into, stepped in to do battle with Goliath, <laughs> David entered into a whirlwind that seemed like it had no end. But you see, David had been chosen and anointed by God. When you have been called by God, when you have been chosen by God, the Lord is on your side. Now I want to say to you, if you're here today and you have accepted Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, then you, like David, have been chosen by God. In John 6, 44, Jesus tells us, for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. Then Paul explains in Romans 8, 29 to 30, God knew his people in advance. And he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you are a Christian, if you are a Christian, the Lord is on your side. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, the Lord is on your side. Look at David. He became the royal harpist, the armor bearer, and finally he was commander of all the military under a mentally disturbed and imbalanced King Saul. At first, Saul was very pleased with him. Oh, he was so, so happy with his abilities, his ability to be able to play the liar and, and be able to soothe him. He loved him. 
But before he knew it, David found himself running for his life. <laughs> you know how it is. At first, people are excited. They're excited about the things that you can do. And then there are those that become jealous of the things that you do. And we all know that jealousy, jealousy is as cold as the grave. And it opens the door to hatred and resentment. David's enemies were at times right in his own camp. Sometimes his enemies were outside the camp. Sometimes his enemies were in his own family. And then there were times that David's greatest enemy was within himself. Had it not been for the Lord on his side, David would have been swallowed up by the anger that consumed Saul. David was hunted. He was hunted all through the countryside by King Saul. He ran for his life. Even though David had a small army and he even had the opportunity to kill Saul. But David wouldn't touch Saul. Because you see, Saul was chosen by God. Saul was God's anointed. And David would not touch God's anointed. In war, David fought. He fought the Philistines and, and the Amalekites and the Jebusites and the Syrians and all the other foreign enemies that came up against Israel. David did such a good job of beating the pants off of all of Israel's enemies that by the time that his son Solomon became king, there was nobody else to fight. And there was this era of complete peace in the United Kingdom of Israel. But even so, David found himself running from his own son, Absalom, who sought to kill him and become king. If it had not been for the Lord who was on his side, David would have been overwhelmed by the raging waters of his enemy's fury. Oh, I know we don't have armies running after us. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I know when they're not chasing us through the countryside. But we do experience hardships. We do endure afflictions. We do experience troubles. James 5.13 tells us that when we suffer afflictions, we should pray. God answers prayer. And it was David who wrote, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him, delivers her out of them all. And as the New Living Translation says, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. If it had not been for the Lord, sometimes because of our stubbornness and our, our persistence to do our own thing, we even find ourselves attempting to run from God. But what did David say in Psalm 139? He said, I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. <laughs> James says, any of you sick, you should call the elders of the church to come and pray over you and anoint you in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. You see, there is power. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. David said, blessed be the Lord, praise the Lord. 
who did not let their teeth tear us apart. Our soul is escaped like a bird from the hunter's trap. The trap is broken. We are escaped. Our help is in the name of Yahweh, who made heaven and earth. The word that's translated as help in this scripture is azer, and literally means to run to support. It means to relieve in difficulty, to deliver from suffering. In other words, our relief, our deliverance from suffering is in the name of the Lord, Yahweh, who made heaven and earth. The Hebrew name for Jesus is Yahshua, which is the shortened form for Yahweh Shua, which means Yahweh, God, is salvation. Yahshua, the third person of the Trinity, Yahshua, whom John says, God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. Your help, my help, your deliverance is in the name of Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shua, in the name of Yahshua, in the name of Jesus. When Peter and John were going into the temple and a man who had been crippled since birth approached them begging for money, Peter said, I, I don't have any silver or, or gold to give you, but I'll give you what I have. <laughs> he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene, get up and walk. And he reached out for the man and pulled him up with his right hand. And as he helped the man up, his ankles and his, as his feet began to be strengthened. And the man jumped up and he stood on his feet and he began to walk and he leaped and he leaped and walked and praised God as he went into the temple with them. Proverbs 18.10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, a strong fortress, and the godly run into him and are safe. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Oh, I told you there's power. There's power in the name of Jesus. Even the demons in hell tremble at his name. <laughs> Satan, oh, Satan set the trap. He did his best. The temptation was compelling, and yes, we went in. But our souls, our souls have escaped like a bird from the hunter's trap. You see, Satan's trap has been broken because your help, my help, our deliverance is in the name of the Lord. <laughs> High blood pressure, low blood pressure, no blood pressure at all. <laughs> Cancer. Diabetes, arthritis, heart disease, COVID-19, the flu, pneumonia. You name the affliction. You name the ailment. We don't have to be afraid because our souls, our souls have escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. I'm here to tell you that the trap is broken. Yes, God is able to deliver. Huh. Just as the three Hebrew boys said, as they were on their way to the fiery furnace, God is able to deliver us. But we have to remember that we are only on a journey through this land. We are not here to stay. We are only on a journey through this land on our way to eternity. If it had not been 
for the Lord on our side, we would still be on our way to hell. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would still be in that abusive relationship. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would still be tearing people down with our tongues instead of building them up with love. If it had not been for the Lord on our sides, we wouldn't know how wonderfully and beautifully we have been made. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would not know that we are righteous, we are holy, we are worthy of the love of God through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus who knew no sin, but became sin to redeem you, to redeem me. Jesus who went down into hell in your place, he went down in the hell of my place. Jesus, Jesus who got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. Oh, I'm talking about Yahweh Shul. <laughs> I'm talking about Yahshua. I'm talking about Jesus. If it had not been, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, tell me, where would you be? Where would I be? Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, as we are here before you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Run back that tape, oh God. <laughs> Close your eyes for a moment. See the Holy Spirit stream your life. And how many times do you see that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, hallelujah, that you would not be here right now. Lord, we come with grateful hearts today. We come thanking you. Oh God, we lay down all of our pride, all of that stuff that says I did this and I did that. We didn't do a thing. Because if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? Oh, you're ready to give God that praise if you're ready to give God that gratitude. And I want you to affirm your belief that it's he that is in control of your life. It is he who has carried you through. Won't you say, Lord, Lord. if it had not been for you on my side, where would I be? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For delivering me. Hallelujah. 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 If you are here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, <laughs> all you have to do is open your mouth and say, Jesus is Lord. All you have to do is believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you have salvation. Hallelujah. Let us stand.